Howdy do, and welcome back to the final edition of the Found Family Trope. I am your host, Jonas Del Rio. Apologies again for the late upload, but if you don't expect that at this point, that's kind of on you, I think. But um, yeah, here we are. I uh, just played a hockey game with the Cybermen. Oh man, I guess that fully doxes me <laughs> if someone looks into that, but... Four people are going to watch this anyway, so who cares? Um, my final report for this course also got graded, so this is purely a victory lap. Um, meh. This is going to be more casual than before, and I can talk for as long or as short as I'd like to, is what that means. So, here we go. The first topic we're going to be talking about is just, wow, it's really over. Five weeks, I guess five weeks of content for the found family trope. Do I plan to do it more? Probably not, but isn't it funny? Um, then we're going to be talking about our usual shenanigans with like the party that I went to, a UBC party no less, whoa. Uh, someone we met there and a little bit of a moral which we can draw from that. And as our last segment, we're just going to have some closing remarks on how I feel the found family trope went. And hopefully that's worth something. So to start things off, yeah, I guess that's it, isn't it? I kind of mentioned in some of the other connected content for this, you can probably tell in my Instagram post and tell in the blog that I am really like saccharine when it comes to endings. Like it just even six weeks spent doing something feels meaningful and it you really just, it gets me tearing up, you know, it gets, gets the old eye bags water in, just, wow, I did that, and, like, I'm not proud of this project, don't get me wrong, like, I got pretty mediocre grades on it, and I don't think that, like, you know, this is something which is, like, too cool, like, it's me yapping for 10 minutes every week, uh, making a cute little Instagram post with, content which is arguably illegal because I, I wasn't the most diligent with my copyright law and lastly like you know was, those written reflections aren't really much like I could have tried harder but I just kind of yapped and wanted to get it over with but end of the day you can look back and you can see wow it's a little bit a work that's like 1800 words or whatever uh, i guess 1500 1500 words maybe up to 1600 whoa um probably about an hour worth of yapping i'll always go a little bit over on my time limit with these podcasts and you know six instagram posts which like it, it's not great <laughs> but it's something and i hope it's a little bit charming and i hope that I know this is mostly just being watched by my friends because, you know, they love me. They're obsessed with me. They need more Jonah's content. Or maybe someone's looking back at this a couple of years later and it's like, what the fuck was this kid on? I don't know. Whoever you are, wherever you're watching this, maybe leave me a comment. I need that engagement, baby. I mean, I'm not going to post again, but like still, what if I do, right? Ha ha ha. But yeah, hopefully it was fun. Um, I guess I'm kind of skip any closing remarks but I just kind of needed to get that off my chest I feel like I'm not wishing that the found family trope was longer I'm very happy to be done with this bullshit honestly but yeah I guess we'll just get into the second segment I made myself sad uh, yeah, I went to a UBC party. One of my friends invited me from high school and, you know, it was her birthday, so I figured I'd come, but I was kind of nervous because it was like the big crossover. Um, she's inviting her high school friends, her uni friends, like her different uni friend groups, her work friends, like a bunch of different people, and it was kind of overwhelming, honestly. I've never been like a party person. Uh, you know, it's a moral blemish on my part. It, it, it's a grave sin, I understand, but I don't know, it's just never been for me. Tried to get drunk, had like seven, uh, I think I had six mixed drinks, and then I had one shot of like Malibu. Didn't work. 
can't tell if I just had too much to eat before the party or if I'm just a heavyweight and I don't like the idea of being a heavyweight. I want it to be cheap, please. But um, ended up meeting two people who, again, keeping with the theme of the found family trope, their names were K and E. Very real names, trust me. That's No, that's the, actually their names. It's, it's not a censorship. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. I said trust me too many times. Anyways, uh, K and E were two of... No, no. That's so sad. That's embarrassing. I'll censor that. Uh, K and E were two of the friend who invited me. He's work buddies. And there were some of the only other men at the party. Um, I'm a little socially awkward. That's no secret. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to approach girls sometimes. Not because I want to hit on them or something like that. I don't know. Just there was a lot of them and they formed circles of like seven. And then I, I, I just I, I didn't want to barge into that shit, you know. But regardless, it was, um, yeah, uh, meeting K and E was interesting just because I've heard a little bit about them through my mutual friend, but I've never actually met them before. So this was a night of firsts for me. And, you know, I think I tend to be a little bit standoffish sometimes when I'm meeting people for the first time, which I have been trying to work on. And I kind of thought I was trying to do it at the party, but honestly, I was kind of tired. So it kind of went decently. Um, I always enjoy parties more ones like the main crowd has left and it's just kind of the after party where like people are kind of leaving, one foot in the door, one foot out, whatever. And I got to man, I had to have some earnest conversation. I had to have, I got to have some earnest conversations with K and E just about what they're up to and what they feel about life. Got to bash on Andrew Tate a little bit, which I was very happy to do, but I also, and this was kind of the part of the conversation which I liked more, was um, Kay would just kind of become a motivational speaker, which is, uh, I don't know, I know how to feel about it. I was going to lie and tell you I don't know how to feel about it, but I really do know how to feel about it. I think it's fucking great. He is two years my junior, but honestly, I kind of, I felt like I was fucking talking to someone like five years older than me. He just has a really good attitude towards life. He's always on that grind set. I feel like maybe you could argue he takes that a little bit too seriously, but can't even say he's someone who takes himself too seriously just because he's like, he seems really down to earth. And even if he's on that grind set, he's just, I don't know. I really like talking to him. He was really charming. Liked talking to E as well. Uh, we spent most of the night together just kind of, you know, messing with, one of the drunk girls making sure that she was drinking water and trying to stop her from drinking more alcohol but she can do whatever the fuck she wants you know just classic party drinking stuff i guess i don't know i couldn't tell you i don't go to these things much but meeting these two people who are very different from me i feel was just an interesting thing and i guess even though neither of them are from sfu uh, the whole spirit of the found family trope is finding family and finding friends and finding community wherever you can, even if that isn't just in SFU. It could be inter-university, where you talk to someone from UBC and become friends with them, even if you don't get to see them every day at school or whatever. Or they don't even need to go to a university. They might just be someone who you met at work or someone who I met from one of my mutuals who they go to work with that other person. I feel like that didn't make sense, but they are the friend of one of my friends, and they work together, which is how I know them. So, yeah, hopefully you guys will feel inspired if we old little Jonas Del Rio can uh, attend a party. Maybe you guys can too. Isn't that so crazy? That sounds so lame. Anyways, our final section and the final ever section of the found family to up closing remarks. In hindsight, I wish that I was more diligent with this project. I wish that I kept up with my uploads a little bit more, made it more of a routine for me so that I wouldn't. Like, even in this late extension thing, which I've done, which I didn't ask for permission for, which I probably should have. Um, 
yeah, I just, <laughs> I'm still late. I'm always late. And like, that's, it's kind of embarrassing, honestly. But mm. after school ended, I've been trying to take better care of myself. Been trying to focus more on the things which I haven't really been taking care of. Trying to work out, trying to take walks in the morning, trying to stretch more. Hasn't been going great. I don't know. I feel like I'm still broken for some reason. Couldn't quite put my finger on it, but that's a little bit too much about me at this point. Found family trope. Yeah, Slay Queen. Oh. I think this was a decent success regarding vlogging and blogging and. I guess, podcasting and Instagramming, being an influencer. I don't think I did a great job, but I feel like I understand more what it means to have an Instagram account, what it means to be a blogger or a vlogger or a podcaster, whatever you, the fuck you want to call me. Um, with how media works nowadays, uh, this will probably be sort of useful if I need to say like on a resume oh hey you guys need like an instagram team thing yeah i know i can totally fucking do that for you look at this thing i made a while ago um <laughs> that sounds so lame and that sounds so fucking capitalist but like hey fucking someone you know your boy's gotta eat jonas del rio's gotta eat the found family trope host but yeah i am um, strange about this ending i'm also strange in general um i'm something and yeah i don't know i tend to get too philosophical when it's too late at night it's not even good philosophy it's just fucking your average sad boy in his fucking bedroom talking to himself philosophy but it's it's something. I guess it's better than just not thinking at all, but I'll spare you of that for now. Maybe there will be a future project where you get to see your host, Jonas Del Rio, do more podcasting, more blogging, more Instagramming, but well, good luck finding that, and I hope I don't have to do that again. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm open to it, but it's just a bit too much investment for so little monetary reward, especially with the class being graded already. I have no reason to be doing this except closure. So I guess on that note, I'll close it out. Thank you so much, dear viewer, for watching The Found Family Trope. Either you just looked at the bookends and happened to end on this one, in which case, welcome. Thank you for coming. I have a couple other podcasts or Instagram posts or blogs if you want to check them out on my website or on the Instagram. Otherwise, if you are somebody who has been here since the start, thank you so much for putting up with my nonsense for so long. And I hope you had some fun. With that said... I've been your host, Jonas Lario. This was the Found Family Trope. Thank you so much, dear viewer, again, for coming along. Can't stress that enough, and I can't say it at enough times to give you justice, but for the last time, thank you for coming, and I hope you have a good final season, I guess is what we'll say. Yeah! Goodbye. Take care. Be safe.